flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video, really helps out. So, today I thought we'd just start something a little bit different, go back to our roots, show one of the youngsters. It's Paul Radcliffe, uh, 17 years old. He's wanted, interestingly, by quite a few players, uh, quite a few clubs, it, it's not, let me show you, it's Aston Villa. They're actually interested in this guy. He's got two goals and four assists uh, playing as a deep line forward. We've kind of, a lot of our under-19s are kind of playing in higher leagues, uh, higher, like, levels so that's why our under 19s kind of suck at the moment kind of wait for the next influx of good players hopefully they come through our youth intake this year i kind of want at least one more good youth intake before the save ends because we've not had one in so long and man that's depressing considering we had an england international in darren lever and a somewhat of a club legend in a way in sean lancaster and also the man the meme costel troffin these guys all came through so early and just nothing recently i know we'd probably never seen them come to fruition but it would just be nice that 4-0 goal by Guerra was class. I wish we could see more one-on-one -on -one situations when where they do that. Yeah, where they go around the goalkeeper and sort of cheeky sucker them in. There is the likes to go around goalkeeper PPM, but Guerra doesn't actually have that. So maybe that does actually happen more if they've got that. But I've rarely ever seen it happen, so I don't know. What you failed to point out with that last regen was that he was Scottish on top of all the names. And imagine the name on the back of his shirt. Well, brilliantly, you sort of could because they had the skin that sort of showed it on there. I had no idea the guy was Scottish. I completely glossed over that. Too busy trying to get my head around his name. Docs wants to have tea with you on a Sunday afternoon. Well, Docs is more than welcome to. We'll have a croissant because, you know, I love those. Arsenal have just brought on a player called Ed Diaper. Someone to cover your ass, man? Oh, yes. Right then. So... It's the big one today, away at Barcelona. We're top of the group thanks to their absolutely shambolic performance against Zenit to only get a one-all draw in Russia. It's pretty bad. Even we won there. But they could still beat us. If, oh God, if only we'd just taken a point against them at home, they'd be in such a difficult situation right now. In fact, I think we'd basically be already through. Well, we're already through, you know what I mean? We need to go and get a point at the new Camp. And I think we're capable of that. I think the first game against them was just one of those strange games. And I think we're genuinely strong enough to go and probably even beat them at the new Camp. Genu I, I feel like anyway. But even a point would be satisfactory and get us through. Also, after the Everton game, the second live call is going to be the Champions League uh, first round draw. So you get to see that in this episode as well. Maybe even a youth preview. Who knows? Unfortunately, though, our... Uh, our trip to Old Trafford did not go down so well with us, unfortunately. It was a bad time. Uh, Troy Parrott did go off early for them in the first half. And at half time, things were actually all right. Problem was, the goal they scored to win this game... Uh, well, essentially, the winning goal was annoying. Beckhart had the ball. No one around him. But he then pulls up with an injury. The Man United player comes through, takes it off of him, and then just goes through and scores. He ended up with a twisted knee and he had to be substituted immediately. Um, very, very unsporting, I would have to say. It's not like he was injured in a tackle no one that was going on. He literally just pulls up with the ball at his feet with no one else around him and can't continue. And they go through and score directly from it. Frustrating times. Uh, and then, unfortunately, we kind of fell apart after that with Lozano and Vladimir of getting goals. Annoyingly, we, we were down to... We, both of our first choice centre acts were also missing. So Perrier and Pinto came in and just could not quite cope. Really frustrating. But then for once, we were actually able to bounce straight back with a 4-1 trashing of Brian. Guerra, again, gave us the lead early on in this one. In the second half, we did start to really grind through them, though, as Darren Lever was absolutely phenomenal. His ball for Guerra was fantastic, firstly. But Jean Carlos knocked one down uh, with a header for Lever, who hit it full-time on the volley back of the net. And then his second goal was even better. He cuts him from the right-hand side, just drives towards the edge of the area, bends one in off the post for his second of the night. That's the kind of performances I want to see out of him. Before Augustin De Los Santos had got one in there as well, Acevedo whipped one to the far post. He was able to smash it home for 3-0 at the time. Brighton did get one back, but it wasn't enough. Excellent performances from Jean Carlos, Lever, and of course, my man Guerra, adding, I think, his 12th in the league. Good stuff. But that does still leave us third in the Premier League. Three points off Manchester United now as a result of conceding those goals to them. Spurs right behind us and they're on a roll. Chelsea still hanging in there, but Palace as well. You know, they're still winning matches and looking very good for another European tilt. Arsenal struggling. Manchester City finally picked up a victory. And if they hadn't, they would have found themselves in 14th spot, uh, given how bad their start to the year has been. And that is genuinely impressive how bad City have been this year. They're actually going to have a real struggle on their hands to get into Europe next year, let alone anything else. And this is a team that were champions just two seasons ago, or three, I suppose. Today... It's Barcelona. And then Everton away, which as much as it is like against a team that are right down there, you can always tell that Everton away is not going to be an easy match. Cut to us winning 7-0. Unlikely though. Interestingly as well, we've been drawn in the FA Cup against either Shrewsbury Town or Ebbsfleet United, which would be a really interesting one to play a team that low down. Uh, could really give us a chance to rest some players. So, Barca have some players that are injured. We have obviously Esperson suspended and Lancaster out. But other than that, we're not bad. Other than a bit of uh, jadedness in some players. But we should be able to push on through that. Dubois had a little rest. Uh, hmm. Is Beckhart available? Probably not, I'm guessing. 
Oh, Keskin's not registered. No, Acevedo could definitely start this. I'm definitely starting him. Lever deserves his start. Cabral has been really good lately. Um, he's certainly improved anyway. So I'm liking what I'm seeing out of these guys. Lever's got a lot to prove still, but he has definitely shown a lot against Brighton. So that's going to be our lineup today. To bar an Asman in the midfield. Lots of links, apart from the fact that Pinto will have to start at the back. But it's not the end of the world. I'm going to have Becker on the bench anyway. So the bench is going to be Becker, Perrier, Silla, Troffin, Hernandez, uh, Fernandez rather, Terso and Torgerson. This is not going to be easy. Bonnet scored those two goals against us in the first game. Frustrating as all hell. Hopefully they actually play this system because we're more efficient against it, but we will see. This is going to be big. And of course we could try to be conservative and just play for the draw here, but that's not lost at all. We do. We owe them. It's nice to see a bit of revenge available for once. It's a rarity. The kind of performances that win you Champions Leagues are in ones like this. It's not like, you know, they've got it all to do, which is perfect. They have to come and they have to beat us, which is good for once. We're actually in the position of strength, which honestly I did not expect to find ourselves in, given the fact that we lost the home game to them. Meccano. But there's all kinds of things that could still go wrong. We could have another game of equal annoyingness. Cabral, he's going to have shooting, isn't he? Oh, finds Darren Lever. He's still got it. Ah, oh, okay. Interesting start. Lever's definitely looking a lot more up for it lately, which is very, very nice to see indeed. He seems to finally be finding a bit of mojo. Lever. Both creatively and from an attacking perspective. Look at this, just taking people on. And he smashes it near post. Everything's gone through Darren Lever so far. Well, I mean, early doors, it's been all Notts County. And Celso's header tips over by Joan. They may have the possession, but we are actually having the uh, shots. Pinto! Oh, goodness me. How have we not scored? Well, they've still not had a shot on target here, which is a good sign. Then again, they did manage to score without one in the last match. So there's that as well. Dubois. Asman. I feel like we're missing Beckart a little bit, but Asman is a very, very suitable player. Cabral. Oh, Jean Carlos. Need some good football here. Cabral, please don't shoot. Pick someone out. Asman, he could, yeah, he can ping him. Cabral again. He's got support from Greg Campbell and, uh-oh, no, that's fine. Pinto will get on that. Dubois. Oh, loads of space for Asabella. He's going to have to shoot here and he smashes it at goal. We could do with pulishing out a little bit here. I don't know what's going on. I, I, that was such a strange passage of play. Thankfully, we got away with that, but they just refused to push up for some reason. Well, 0-0 at halftime. Barcelona have had a couple of good chances, in fairness. Don't know what that was before halftime. The ball was kicked down the pitch, and none of the players, they pushed up defensively, but none of the attacking players moved. Really weird. A few players, particularly Asman and Jean Carlos, have underperformed tonight quite severely. Oh, what a ball. It had to run for Barcelona now. Well, I mean, there you go. Barcelona. We, we should have taken our chances earlier in the game. When we had that period of initial dominance, we needed to take advantage of that, and I don't even know what's happened here. They've just allowed him to take that way too easily. Great run from Ihatteran, though. And the moment he gets near the goalkeeper, that touch, you know it's going in. Ugh. Triple sub, early doors, just to get someone on that might know what they're doing. Juan Terso, the former Atletico player, remember? Can he dig a cross out? He might, you know. Ugh. He just took one more step than he should have. Always one extra step. Holder. That's an incredibly good header. They're going to end up scoring from this, aren't they? From a really obviously good attacking situation from us. Oh, that, that's the main issue. They just look a bit lazy in places. Becker. Campbell. Whip that ball across. And Torgerson. And Tuss. Oh, goodness me. It just will not go in against Barcelona, will it? My God. We've had some... The Both games against Barcelona in this group have been really just... They have, just haven't quite gone our way. Is that... That can't be... I guess the ball's going to out of play or something. I don't know why it's saying it's 2-0 when... I don't know. Why is it not... Oh, it is a goal. So why is it... That's weird. Usually the thing pops up immediately um, when it's a goal. Yeah, I mean, that's that's 2-0 Barca. I mean, the defender is in front of him! Ah, oh, dearie me. Well, yeah, we've just not had it against Barca this season. The Both games against them have just been so strange. Cabral. And now it's going to be a penalty to us as well. Perfect. And now it's popping up with Felix Correa. Well, I guess Guerra's got a chance. He probably missed this as well now. It's Barca. <laughs> of course he fucking does. Ah, uh, dearie me. Yeah, I don't know. We just cannot seem to beat Barca this season. It is a weird... Well, I don't know. Both games against them have been so strange. Juan Terzo. He's been fouled again, but it's a final whistle. Barcelona 2, Notts County 0. And we don't win the group. All right. Well, there we go. Barcelona 2, Notts County 0. We are going to come second in our group. That's frustrating because we beat them home and away last year, didn't we? In the actual knockout rounds. But we must move on. Right then, we're back. So, uh, Arsenal and Spurs are playing today. Arsenal, if you could do us a favour, that would be excellent because the league has kind of taken a bit of a turn now. Uh, we're down to fourth. 
as things stand, as Chelsea have actually started to find some victories again, uh, Liverpool are just absolutely unstoppable at the moment. They are now 10 points clear of us uh, with no games in hand at all. Um, they look dead. So the Man United are doing all right, but they're going to still probably be seven points behind Liverpool. They are looking very, very strong. And we're just starting to wane a little bit at the moment. Frustrating times. Um, hopefully, though, we can just get a bit of a run together over the Christmas period and start to recoup a little bit. Unfortunately, though, suspensions are on, on the cards. Beckhart will come back in again. Thankfully, that little rest has helped him. Uh, I don't know if Acevedo is available. He's not. Or is he? Yeah, he is. Where's Keskin? Is he still injured? I'd still rather play Acevedo as a left back because, you know, he's a left back. Do at least have the proper defensive setup back again now. So there is that. And that, maybe that's what's cost us against Manchester United and Barca. That lack of extra quality for someone like Jesperson. Oh, dear. Right. Let's get some comeback on the cards. Right. Let's have this. This is important. We need to go to 37 points now to keep that gap going. Um... And just to keep on winning, frankly. Just keep that winning mentality about the club. Uh, a lot of players are having the best seasons of their careers. But I think so. I think the key thing we've got is the wingers aren't quite generating what they were last season. And that could be a problem for us. Particularly if we fall... Oh, God, nearly down inside a minute. I think the output from our wide players is not what it was. And it's saved. Like, we, we're not getting the goals or assists that we were from those wide areas. Lever certainly stepped up against Brighton. And it certainly showed what a difference that can make when he does. Marcus Rashford playing for them as well. And Ivor is now through for Everton. And, wow, they really could be 2-0 up inside three minutes here. But I do wonder if we're going to lose a lot of morale, like we did last time uh, when we lost to Barca. We lost the Liverpool game. Then we lost the Watford game. We really have to pick ourselves up. Like we did after the Man United defeat. We came and got that result against Brighton and it made a huge difference. But I'm very concerned that that may not happen this time. Oh, for goodness sake! He put the tackle in... How many... Greg Campbell makes two tackles every time, straight back to him. Greg, can you actually maybe tackle the ball? I don't know, not to an Everton player. Ball in. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. That play, the way Campbell tackles it at them twice. Then this ball in. There's enough defenders to deal with this, and yet... Pfft, good Lord. Well, much like after the Barcelona defeat the first time around, it seems to rejuvenate... A nice team from Liverpool to play them in the next game. Yeah, we just, I don't know. Considering how, well, remember, we started this season with eight consecutive victories and eight consecutive clean sheets as well. Beckhart gets it on goal. Cam. Oh, for God's sake, man. And again, every single fucking tackle is just going straight to them. And now Campbell's hurt himself as well. Yeah, there is no way in a million years we win this match. Every time we touch the ball, it just sort of ricochets away from... <laughs> Ivora. Yes, for some of the big tackle. Wait, what? What? Look. Went in with two feet. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Ivora coming along the side there. And Jesperson... What? Well then... This is so similar to the last time we lost to Barca. Go out against Ever uh, against Liverpool. And then... Oh, Jesus. Right. Okay. That's how it's going to be, is it? Tomorrow's ball in. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, my God. Defensively, they have completely turned off. It's just everything is just... It's amazing. It's actually genuinely impressive. Anyone going to go actually... Close him down at all. Nope. Wait for him to put the ball in. And then just... Whoops. <laughs> Is there not an option to tell him to stick it up the bollocks? Because that's where we're at right now. We are Roy, Ke Roy Keane levels of angry. If I had any water, I would be angrily sipping it. Let's put it that way. Maybe a direct free kick goal to just add insult to injury. No, you managed to get it clear. My goodness. Well, you know, with every season that goes well, you're going to have some negative things. And hopefully this is one of those. Darren Lever will... Yeah. Torgerson, round the side for Guerra. This will be a miss. Yep. <laughs> Can't even get that right. Yavorsky, back post, and oh, great save from Suarez. Just a bad old day at the office. Oh, well, it's been a while since I've had a good old ranty, angry episode. Like a proper, like, what is going on in this team kind of uh, game. You need one occasionally, just to remind you that actually, we're maybe not as good as we think we are. Ooh, good chance for Everson again there. I mean, they could have had three or four in this game, in all honesty. And we're just not allowing them to do it. And I know, of course, we're down to ten men. I mean, realistically, we need to be starting to look over our shoulder rather than up at the top of the league. That's gone. Um, we are not defending our title, that is for sure. Well, there you go. Everton 2, Notts County 0. Uh, no explanation for that. We're just shit, apparently. Um, performed badly. Couldn't buy a pass to save our lives. Couldn't defend anything. And Everton were really good as well. You know, 16th place Everton. Really good. We've got to get back on the winning ways. Um, 
Man United in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup next. Going to just play a rotated side. But then we're playing City at home. That's not going to be easy at all. But they're at least not the City they were. So let's see what we're going to do for the next episode now. Um, but it kind of has to be... Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so yeah. Liverpool and Liverpool. Look at this, though. We've got Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Wolves, Liverpool, Arsenal, Watford, Chelsea again. This is not going to be a good period. And if we don't start to pick up some results in this, we're going to actually find ourselves sliding, I don't know, outside the European spots right now. We just, I don't know. Like, when we lose, we just cannot seem to score in games. And that seems to be the problem. But we've got the six goals against Bayern. Anyway, we must move on. If you've enjoyed this episode, drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be great as well. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye. <laughs>